Greetings, everyone. We are going to talk about this week's project, land art. Land art is made from nature and returns to nature. So your objective is that you're going to learn what land art is, also known as earth art, and the contemporary artists who, contem uh, who create it. Your success criteria is going to be using sticks, leaves, rocks, dirt, grass, water, mud, seeds, berries, flowers, and other natural found objects. Students will create a land art sculpture. Since the late 1960s, artists around the world have been creating art made, uh, made from natural materials and in natural environments. Uh, Robert Smithen uh, brought in, hauled in a bunch of uh, gravel to Salt Lake, uh, to the Salt Lake, and he built up this uh, sculpture in the water of a spiral, which I thought was kind of cool. Mudman sculpture in the Lost Gardens of Heligan of Cornwall, England. I love these. I love the hair and the expression from the face and all the different values of color and texture. Tough Works by Cornell University students. This was done in a uh, huge field. I thought this kind of neat. Lots of different kinds of lines going on there as well as co color and texture. Land or earth artists use only natural materials in their art. So as the art is intended to wash or blow away or biodegrade back into the earth over time. This is called uh, Two Oak Stacks by Andy Goldsworth. Another Andy Goldsworth uh, projects where, works of art rather, where he uh, worked with rocks and leaves and there was a gradation of color Kind of an ombre effect from white to black and on the other one it's orange to red which would be also considered cool color or warm colors by mistake some projects only last for a day or two uh, as you can see here one of them the one on the right was created in a pond and the other one i'm not sure whether they grew those dandelions or whether they just placed them there but i would imagine if they placed them there it wouldn't last very long other projects are built to last for several years uh patrick Duggedry, i think that's how you say it uh created the sculpture up here on the left and then many many years later it's still standing and color has changed and texture has changed but the main idea is still the same. Bowerbirds from Australia and New Guinea create their own earth art, as you can see. Kind of cool. Love how they uh, kind of stack up all those eggs. And then you might be making land art without knowing it. I mean, who doesn't build a snowman when it snows once a year in Anacortes? Or how many times do you go to the beach and create sandcastles at some point in your life? I'm a big fan of creating forts. It was like my jam when I was younger, as well as when my kids were younger. So uh, a fort could be considered land art. And I want you to think big. You don't have to be so small. Uh, think of what kind of resources you have around you, what kind of space you have around you to uh, create something. I love that they just took over this entire beach and created a design. Uh, I'm not sure how they did, whether it was using a shovel or their feet, but uh, I just thought it was wicked cool. These are some other examples from previous projects. Kind of neat how they incorporate the shadow into their project on the lower right. Some more ideas. Lots of patterns and movement going on, repetition. And in case you did not see this uh, last week, uh, this is a video called A Case for Land Art. And uh, kind of talks a little more about land art if you have not seen it yet. What kind of land art can you create? My favorite quote, the earth without art is just Eh. Anyway, so uh, please let me know if you have questions. I'm pretty quick to uh, I'm pretty quick to respond to emails and just let me know if you need anything. Take care.